Welcome to the Once a Cowboy, Always a Cowboy podcast, where you hear the history of Cheney football from the unique perspective of Coach Ron Burtis. So we'll just we'll just kind of start, and uh, today we're talking with uh, Coach Dick Angle, who um, was my head football coach and had a, a great influence on me uh, growing up with my time at Ursuline. And um, so doing a little research, I saw um, 40 years of, of coaching. Um, what a what a career. And, uh, you know, head coach at, at numerous schools, but probably uh, best known for uh, his time at Ursuline. And, and uh, you were there from 1979 to 1996 is that right correct and yep. then uh from howland f- at uh from 1998 to 2013 is that right correct yes um so doing a little research i saw some pretty interesting stats and uh record of 262 161 and three 12 conference titles um two trips to the state semifinals and I saw one stat I want to ask you, because this is mind-boggling to me. Um, This was from WFMJ. It said 33 playoff appearances. Is that accurate, or is it? No, I don't. don't. (laughs) That seems a bit. Uh, I don't know. I've never counted, but I know. um, I know we, our first was was at Ursuline in 83. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, you know we we did that's the eighty three I, I that seems that seems a little bit I know we at Holland at the they were we were miserable in ninety eight and ninety nine and I in two thousand we start we flipped a little bit and I think we got in in two thousand two and we made it we put, we made it we made a ten year run and we we're close to twenty but there's no way thirty okay okay i just had to ask that's that's pretty uh that's all right sounds good I, i'll take it i don't know either. <laughs> yeah right right every year it gets a little more right like that fish oh no, that's it man yeah you, you know um, i never lost a game <laughs> <laughs> right right so um you know we ron and i we've been doing this once a cowboy always a cowboy podcast and and um you know, it's been a real, real interesting thing for me to be part of it for a short time and have some family um, connections and then just listen to Ron and, and learn. Uh, so, you know, some people may be thinking, well, you know, why is why is Dick Angle on the Once a Cowboy, Always a Cowboy podcast? Um, but I, I think talking to you recently and over the years, um, you being a historian of of just uh, football in the Mahoning Valley and also um, – you know, you're a West Sider and you grew up and played against and and played with at St. Brendan's, a lot of these guys. <clears throat> and so, you know, I guess I just wanted to kind of start off with maybe letting you go with uh, your West Side experience growing up and, and how that kind of related to um, seeing Cheney as, as maybe in the grade school and then playing against Cheney as you uh, – um, grew up and went to Ursuline. So maybe you could just start there. Sure. Sure. I, I figure, you know, I appreciate you guys letting me come on because I'm a West Sider always been always will. And like I said, I always wanted Cheney to go nine and one. So that, you know, my best friends, uh, half of them were from Cheney and half of them were from Ursuline, but we all, it was, a, it was a unique situation in, in the, Four years that I went to Ursuline and 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 played and and uh, you know uh, good friends that were Cheney players. Joe Letzi, great player for Cheney, coach for Cheney. Bob Crock was a tackle from you know Billy Naples, Ray Bry and I sat next to each other in in history and we laughed one day about we were le- learning about the China uh, the Great Wall of China and we're looking at each other and said Ray I'm never going to Great wall of china why are we looking at this and when my son was stationed in korea guess what my wife and i went to the great wall of china as soon as i got home i called way bright i said you ain't gonna believe this i went to the great wall you know so things like that you know bill bailey and uh, those guys and you know and and, and 
there are some guys who are myself, my brother, Bill, who's a great player as a linebacker there. Denny Kalani, God rest his soul, was a great athlete. And Jimmy Donlin, Billy Handel, Jimmy Handel, John Green, to me, the greatest athlete I ever played with, against, or knew. He was really, really good. He went to Georgia, you know, and things didn't work out. He came back home. But, but again, we were all West Siders. And <laughs> the only time we never spent time together was the week we played. You know, we, and I'm telling you, we were at the Ohio Bell Telephone Company on Osborne every night after we got our homework done. And in the summertime, talking about it, we going to record hop this tonight or Friday night at Idor Park, or aren't we? Ah, I'm not going. Can you get the car? Yeah, I'll get the car. Okay, we're going. You know, these things went on. And, 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 but it was a, just a mutual thing that, uh, um, you know, when we got to the eighth grade, some went to, you know, some St. Brennan's guys went to Cheney and some didn't. I, I was close to going. My mom felt academically that I wouldn't study if I went to Cheney because I knew too many people. And, and actually, uh, you know, Red and I talked one time and, and, you know, he was really gracious and says, you know, we really love to have you at Cheney. I know your, your family is pro Ursuline and so forth, but if you, if you wanted, you know, you, the door is open for you here. And I, I really appreciated that, you know, and coach Pelosi and, and the, the staff they had, you know, those guys, and they were, they were, they were coming, you know, Cheney had been in the, in the law there for a while. And, but they were, they were coming 60, the 63 season was the flip year. Hey, Joe Dick, hey, Dick, let, let me ask you, did you mention John Green? Um, and I remember as a kid seeing him play, did he, is this a, in fact a true story that he, uh, in a Ursuline Cheney game was dating Bernice Belsick and, uh, got tackled out of bounds and broke her leg. She was a cheerleader. Everything's true except breaking her leg, <laughs> but they did he, he, he did get knocked into her out of bounds, okay. but she got out. She got up strong. She was a West Sider. She wasn't yeah, going yeah, yeah. with John Green. But that is a true story. Yeah, they were dating. In fact, I, I, you know, I shouldn't say this. <laughs> it's going to be on the air, but I think he kind of left Georgia because he missed her. Oh, okay. and, uh, but they never did stay together. And, uh, yeah. you know, but yeah. I see John once in a while. He still looks like he can play, but that's, you're real close on that story. Yeah, yeah. Which is very interesting, and that was the other thing. You know, the guys from Cheney would would date Urson girls. Urson girls were dating Cheney guys. We were dating Cheney girls for the whole. You know, it was a it was a it was a different era because I I'll say one thing: the North Side guys didn't have the same feeling for Rand as the West Side players that Urson had for Cheney guys. I mean, they were our friends. You know, if we got a flat tire, we could call them. They could call us. And that that was unique. And, I, you know, I would hope that, that somewhat is the same today. Things have changed so much. But uh, it made it a unique thing. And, you know, in the city, you know, from 1945 to 68-69, the city was the king. There was no playoffs. I mean, if you went to a football game in, in uh, the 50s or in, in the 60s, uh, Friday night ran ran stadium. There, there'd be eight nine thousand people, and then on the other side of the town, south, there'd be eight thousand people. You know, South High School was a great program. Cheney was getting better and got better. You know, Wilson struggled, but you, you had to get ready for him. You know, the only team that that it ran was really good. You know, Robinette was the coach. I mean, they were the, the city was strong. You know, Mooney with with uh, uh, Danny Barrett and Don Butchie. You know, North was the only one that struggled. And, uh, you know, the, that's why there was the preview. Yeah, I was just going to say the preview. The preview, preview to the previous. Strictly the money went to North because they were on a uh, like a 59-game losing streak. <laughs> and, and, and one of my – I coached it as an assistant at Camel and a guy by the name of John – oh, jeez, now I'm, I'm going blank on him. Constantino. Not Constantino, but he was he was great. He was an assistant 
that's in there too. But John, John actually coached it at Rand. I, I, I'm thinking I, I'm terrible. I, I'm embarrassed that I don't I, I don't have his name because he just he just passed away too. He's great. He was a Naval Academy guy for a couple of years. But anyways, he went to to North for a couple of years and broke the, the streak. And then of course the African American coach came. I I can't recall his name. You know that he he started. That's when they saw North started to win. Clifton Knox. Yeah. Cliff Knox. Clifton Knox. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Clifton to flip North around and and so forth. And you know the city was good. And then you know then they had the teachers problems and and schedule was scheduling was uh, you know it wasn't gonna, there wasn't going to be any football. And uh, Ursuline and Mooney was getting cold feet. They went independent for a year. Then the next year, you know, they split and went to the Still Valley. But before that split, man, if you won the city series, you were king. Yeah. You know, you felt like you you won the world. You know, yeah. and you know we were fortunate in '64 in that in that battle. And you know, Cheney was a much better team than we were. But that night, we were be- we, we were good for five minutes, and uh, we pulled the upset. And you know, the following year, then they won it and won the city. I think undefeated. My brother's senior year. You know, Billy. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the excitement was amazing. And then, you know, then the Steel Valley got bigger because all of a sudden the farm boardman wasn't 800 kids anymore. And farm Fitch wasn't 600 kids anymore. They were like 1,500 kids, you know. And then, and, and, you know, the Steel Valley became stronger and stuff. So interesting how it, it changed. And But I always remember... Uh, I, I played at Missouri. One of my good friends is Gary Barnett, who had, was very successful at Northwestern and at Colorado. And he was coaching high school football in, in Colorado at the time when when we started playoffs, which I think 1972 was the 71 was the a dry year. They had the playoffs in place, and they ran it, and they told all the points and everything but it didn't count. And then 72, it became official. That's when they started. They took the two top teams. Um, and I told Gary, I go, Oh man, I'm so excited. We're going to have playoffs in Ohio. He goes, you guys in the end, you'll be sorry. He says, because you have a great year and then you get in the playoffs and you get beat. And all you remember is the last game, which there was a lot of truth to that. You know, there's only, there's only, you know, at the time when this playoff started, there was triple A, double A, and A. So there was only three teams that were going to be happy. You know, now it's expanded a lot and so forth. But, you yeah, know, look, it was kind of interesting. Look at uh, Ed's 74 team, uh, Cheney. They go undefeated. They don't get in. They beat right. Mooney. They don't, they don't get in. That was one of the best teams Cheney ever filled. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That was – I always felt – my 88 team at Ursuline, we were seven, two, and one. We tied Erie Prep there because uh, Pennsylvania had not gotten away from ties. Yeah. And that kept us out of that. And I, we were peaking. I thought we had a shot, one of the best shots ever. And we, we didn't get in. And that was terrible. So when we went to the four teams, that was exciting, yeah. you know, you know, and, and so forth. But uh, I mean, growing up on the west side and and um going and watching cheney play and and playing on on the north side of ursuline you know those were great days for me my brother uh we got to play together which is you know my parents are so excited about it and and uh um but it was it was uh you never we we never forgot where we were from which was West side. I can't say once a Cabo, always a Cabo, but I'm once a West side or always a West side. So that yeah. he, he pretty got darn close. Yeah. So, and I remember you when you were, when you were playing at Cheney and I remember when you got the job and you're a holy name guy. And, you know, Steve Kravonic was a holy name guy. And, yeah. you know, you were talking about the single wing. I listened to a couple of the podcasts about that was the offense. And it was the offense because we at St. Brennan's, you know, and Johnny Majors, who became a great pit coach and took Cheney guys all to Iowa State and in the pit his whole life, yeah. you know, he was one of the last great single wing tailbacks in, in college football. Yeah. So 
there's a lot of connections to, uh, to I, football and greatness. I interviewed with you. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, uh, I was I was right out of being a GA at Syracuse, and uh, you interviewed me at Blake's Bar. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise! Shocking. Yeah. You were at Sharon Kennedy then. Yes, yeah. I do remember. Yeah. And uh, that was that. And I ended up going to Camel uh, and working with Eddie Klein. There you go. And I, I think I encourage you to do that, maybe. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I don't know where, where we were in our, in our started there. Because I remember my very first year, Billy, I, Billy Darusha came over and interviewed with me. And I said, Bill, I'm going to tell you something right now. We're not going to win a game. These guys were two and 38. They can, they don't have shoes to wear, you know. So we were probably getting closer to getting better, but but uh, you did the right thing. Yeah, well, Billy was with, with me for a year at Syracuse. I was at Syracuse for two years as a GA. Billy, the first year, was with me, and then okay, then he ended yeah. up uh, hooking up with Ed and coaching at Cheney. Uh huh. So how long you stay with Klein? One year, two years? One year, one year, and it, it was the politics and 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 I oh. have I have Camel back. My mother's a Washco, uh, oh. was a Washco. So uh, chief of police and the funeral home and and uh, but it was it was uh, it was just not a good situation. Uh, poor Ed. I mean, he's a good football coach, and uh, yes. they, they 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 were just brutal. I mean. There were board members coming to me as a young kid saying, you just mind your P's and Q's and you'll, you'll be the man. And uh, I said, I don't, yeah. don't want to be the man. I work for the man. Uh, and, so uh, my, my, um, when I, I coached one year with Jim Mon at, at Latonia and then he quit and went back because Eddie Klein left um, Ursula and went to Toledo and mom yes. went back and got the job and uh, um, so, you know, he went, he said, well, why don't you come with me to Ursa? And I go, well, I mean, I'm going to stay in a public school. And I ended up going to Camel with Tony Cougars. And yeah. to me, Tony Cougars. you know, Ron Posey coached me at St. Brennan's. And, uh, I always thought I was a hardworking player and that's why I became a good player. I don't think I was ever a great player. But I learned, I was watch, I watched everything and, and how Posey organized practices. I mean, we were running St. Brendan's practices like we were in high school and college. We had doubles. We played, we practiced nine in the morning at, at Shenley Field and we came back at six at St. Brendan's. It was crazy. And then, you know, and then I go to, to uh, Camel with, with Tony and he, he was, we're, we're, being competitive in the Steel Valley, who has now gotten so big because of Fitch and Boardman yeah. and Earthman and Mooney's there. And we're hanging in there because of his program of off season, the way he treated kids, the way he handled players and, and how we everybody was coaching on the same page. And and any any when I got in high school goes right back to Tony Cougars. He was a great coach and so forth. But he fought being a Greek in camp. Yeah, yeah. And he was sure. a Greek, and it was a more of a Slovak, Irish, Polish community than a Greek community. Yes. But Tony Cougars was an excellent, excellent coach, and you know, sure. I stayed with him three years, and taught me a lot. You know, and it was uh, part of the fun. You know. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta have manners. Um, one of the things that both you guys have really talked about, and we were talking before you kind of got on. Um, we were talking about just the staffs that both of you had and the longevity, right? What do you think, um, how do you think both of you 40 year career, Ron, you did it for 20. Um, how do you think you were able to build those relationships and keep guys on your staff and coming back year after year? Um, what are some of those things that benefited you? Do you think? Either one of you guys. Well, as, as, go ahead, Ron. Why don't you no, start? no, you go ahead, Dick. I, 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 well, I, I did... you know, I'll, I'll talk forever. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I think that uh, as we talked a little bit off camera when, when we started before Ron got 
back from the flag game. Um, you know, it was, it was important to me to, I always wanted coaches that were, were teachers, not necessarily academically in the classroom, but they were teachers, that they were going to teach kids the game. And that was always my first motive. And, I, and the second was I want a loyalty. I would tell them all the time, I want you to become a head coach. There's only one job I don't want you to take. That's my job, you know. And so when I would interview people, and if you remember, you know, I, whatever you were going to coach, you're going to coach. Uh, you know, if you coach linebackers, you told me who the best linebackers were, and they played. And you did the drills, you know. But we, we were pretty set with our philosophy offensively and defensively. Uh, we always were looking for new and creative things. Um, but I said that if, if you put in a new and creative thing out there and we say, hey, we ain't doing that, don't, don't be hurt because, you know, that's the way it is. You know, and, and I think the other thing was, I, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this, but I was a bonus guy. <laughs> I, you know, we, I always had a couple of people that uh, were uh, really uh, into the, I call them team owners that would be uh, uh, willing to, to help because, you know, at Sharon Kennedy, our salaries weren't that good. And even when we first went to Urson, they were kind of subpar. And uh, so I would, hey, you know, I'd say, hey, we're, you know, we're playing uh, we're, we're, we're playing Boardman this week and they're really good and so forth. We got to get them, man. And we get them. I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's going to be worth 200 bucks to you. <laughs> you want to give it to you and your wife? Fine. You want to keep it? Fine. But, you know, and then we always had apparel, you know? Yeah. I mean, they had, they had four pair of shoes. They had more damn pullovers and shorts and everything else. So I treated them as best I could, you know, and, and, and I expected a lot for him, you know, and I, I, you know, I said, you, you're just like, the, you're like the kids, you know, you're, you know, the most important thing is, uh, you know, accountability. So I'm going to hold you accountable. You know, there's two kinds of accountability, good accountability and bad. In the good, you're going to be praised for it. And the bad, your ass is denied, you know, and um, I did it with the team the same way. You know, I, I think accountability is the, the most important thing. And I think, you know, we've lost that countrywide somewhat. I hope athletically we're, we're trying to push it and keep it going because kids have to know they're accountable, you know, and, and we know because we were part of being stupid when we were 16, 17, just like they are. And uh, young coaches, just like young coaches are, that people make mistakes and so forth, but you get, you got to be accountable for it. So, I think that was important, and and that helped me get keep guys, and uh, because they knew they were important, they're important to the kids, they were important to the to to me, and they were, um, you know, and we weren't crazy, we weren't crazy with meetings, and so forth. We we did things uh, that were good, and of course, Ron knows too when you know one sixteen millimeter left world, the world of coaching got to be a little easier with dvd with uh, the tapes and then the dvds you know you can make copies guys can work at home a little bit you didn't have to stay eight hours on a saturday getting ready for your opponent you know you you stayed you stayed seven hours and 50 minutes <laughs> so you got out earlier you know and so all that you know took took place and and again we we would look at one of the things we would do and you know as a player that uh, we would always bring our kids in on on Saturdays, no matter what. And, but there would be a time during the season, towards the end of the year, where we would try to figure out. You know, hopefully, we had a Thursday game that made it a lot easier. Even if we had didn't, we had a Friday game. We would designate in August. Okay, guys, you know the eighth week of the season, we're not meeting. And on that, the, the day after the game, we're not meeting. You want to go to a college game. You want to do something with your parents, with your girlfriend. That's the day you can, there's not going to be anything on Saturday. And I, I think that was important for coaches and kids and so forth. We kind of took that break. But again, we were, we were at the point where we were on the verge. We, we kind of knew we were going to get into the playoffs. So. We knew we were going to be an extra longer run, so you wanted to give time off 
Yeah, I think all that stuff helped, you know. And I think I was kind of fair. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't, you know. I know one thing. I had I got I had great help. That's all I know. But I will let me tell this story because I told it to you and I'll tell it fast. Ron, you'll appreciate it. And it goes back to the Cheney, Cheney 64 game. Because we got Tom Carey, our coach. And Tom Carey was in World War II and he was shell shocked. So he had a he had a uh, smile. He uncontrollable smile at times. So you know, you'd be practicing, he'd be ripping your ass and he'd be smiling. And you know, if you're a sophomore, you didn't understand that, and then he'd whack it. You know, you knew you figured it out. The kids would tell you, oh, he smiles, but that's from World War II, you know. He's not laughing. So, anyways, we're, so we're we're playing the game, and you know, the history of the game, Cheney got the ball under 20 and they drove it all the way up to our 20. And they had to keep going. So it's late in the game. And he calls timeout, and the and only the captain could run to the sideline at the time. So I run over to the sideline and Tom looks at me. <laughs> I'm like listening. What's the great word going to come from his mouth that stopped this Cheney team from driving? And he, he gets the smile on his face. And he goes, they're moving the ball. And I'm thinking to myself, no kidding. Really? I go, yeah. He goes, you got to go out there and tell them we have to stop them. I go, Okay. So I run back on the field and they, everybody's, what do you say? What do you say? He said, they're moving the ball. And they all said, no, I'm kidding. I go, what do you say? What do you say? He said, we got to stop them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Miraculously, we did. So now I go back to now I'm a head coach at, 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 at Ursuline and, and Eric and Gara's on my staff. And is there time out and we're out on the field and here's the DB coach is talking to the secondary. Uh, Eric's upstairs, so the linebacker, so the guy on the phone on defense for Eric, because I had my defensive guy in the box, is talking to the linebackers. The D-line coach is talking to the D-line. The whole nine yards, blah, blah, blah. we got to stop this team from driving. And the, the game starts again. The team takes the ball, drives, and scores. I said, what the shit? I get seven guys on the field coaching, coaching these guys up. They can't stop them. Tom Carey just tells me, tell them to stop, and we stop them. <laughs> <laughs> How do you figure it out, right? We have become so organized, you know that, from the time you started coaching, how things progressed, sure. and to the point where, you know, I, I in my last uh, eight years, the guys just coach one side of the ball. You know, when we first started, everybody had to do both sides, you know. So the game has progressed so much, and but sometimes you you wonder, you know, these guys with the with the 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 um the, the cell phones on the sideline now, and I don't know if uh, how you're allowed to do that in Florida. You can do all that stuff. You can have the, you can have the iPads and watch the plays and all that yep. stuff. And, you know, I don't know if that helps you or confuses people. I don't know. You know what happened to coaching all week and get ready and do it. Yeah. What do you think, Coach? Well, I I, I agree with most of what you said, um, uh, if not all. Um, I, I I felt that there was that, that first and foremost you you have to coach your coaches um, because to to get all those person different personalities to mesh um, and uh, you got to be you got to be willing to burn the midnight oil and we did uh, sure. but we but we enjoyed each other I mean and, and I'm sure you had the same situation we spend so much time together that if you didn't, it would be miserable. It would, it would be miserable. <laughs> um, yes. But, uh, you know, fortunately, like you, I was, I was just extremely blessed to, to have uh, the guys that, uh, that I had in, in, in that, that, that inner core that, that lasted for a long time. And, and uh, um, it was, it was a great, we, we off the field we we socialized i mean we were friends and 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 i think that's that that's really important uh and, and was there was there uh, moments of disagreement A absolutely uh and uh you know we'd go around and around and 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 there would be there would be some confrontation but uh um you know in, in the end, we 
we all knew that we were headed in the same direction. And uh, that was to get our kids better. And, and they did a phenomenal job. Definitely. You know, I, I remember a couple of times telling Garo, I go, you really want to do that? Yeah, I do. I go, it better work. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that, was, that was your way out as a head coach, right? It better work. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah and, it, it, and, and that's the thing, you know, um, none of my guys were clock watchers. And like I said, in the early days with 16 millimeter, I mean, it was, it, you know, we came in at seven on Saturday. I mean, and we do our, 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 our film with our kids and, and watch them with our kids and work them out. And, you know, by three o'clock, then we try to work for a couple hours. Then we go have to go scout. And then we come back in Sunday and spend the whole day getting ready. Can you imagine spending the whole day getting ready for Cardinal Mooney? All they did was run the stack. You know, it was crazy. But you yeah. did it because you were afraid you, you'd miss something. You know, yeah. and, and then, then, you know, again, the, the, the DVDs came and, and it was, you know, you could you still did it. But, you know, we, we would find out that as our program got better, there were teams we, we, we were going to play for a, for a week, a weekend we knew you know, we, we were going to be a better than them. So, you know, we meet with the kids and, and you know, we do a two hour meeting and we take a Sunday off. So you, you filtered all that in and uh, kept everybody happy. But I, and I know you didn't have any. We, we never had any clock watchers. No, 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 no. But there was times where guys said would say, hey, coach, I got to do this. You know, sure. I got to take my way from this or I got to do. So you said, go, you know, sure. get back when you can. Sure. You know, but it wasn't every week. Yeah, well, I, 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 I'm sure like like uh, you, I, I had guys, uh, especially early when I first started, that their kids were playing. Okay, they were, they were playing on Sunday in the uh, parochial league. Uh, right. Uh, uh, Pope, oh, my uh, kids, they were playing on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were <laughs> I know. You I know, know what I mean. Too. You know what I mean. But yeah, I'd I say, hey, go, you know, that's sure. where we were meeting on Sunday. Uh, we, we eventually started to meet on Saturday. Friday night, you wait, go to Youngstown Microfilm, pick up the film late and then, and, and, uh, you know, break it down and, and be ready for Saturday meeting. Um, but, uh, yeah, on, when, when we were meeting on Sunday, and, and even when we were meeting on Saturday, and there were guys on staff that had – Kids that were playing uh, uh, little league football or whatever, sure. go and watch yeah. it. You know, I mean, hey, we're still going to be here. You know, we're right? Gonna... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, so, one time, my son he, he played for the Hubbard Little Eagles, and and so I tell the guys, I I got to go to this game. You know, so you guys just keep you know watching film who who we're playing, breaking them down, figuring out how we're going to do it, and I'll be back as soon as I can. So I go to the game, game's over. I get in my car and I'm telling you, I'm going down seven. I'm going, I'm going down the seven in, in the young sign. And I, I got to be going 80 miles an hour. And I'm going down Elbert Street. I'm going down like 90. And I'm going up Madison. I pull on the ramp. And it's a good thing I looked at in. I'm going to park on the ramp at, at Ursuline. He, he knows where the ramp is. It's a good thing I look out my back window because there's a cop and there's the things wheeling around. And I, I would have pulled, I would have went right into him and smashed him to try to park on the side. And he comes up to me, goes, Coach Angle, what the hell are you doing? I go, I'm late. My coaches have been here. I wanted to see my son play. I uh, I, I have no excuse, man. I, you want to write me a ticket, write me a ticket. I, I'm I'm at fault. Thank God he was Christian. <laughs> he says, Don't ever let me get you again. I go, Amen, man. I never did it again. But still in Dallas, that we'd we'd go out. We'd send two coaches out for lunch, buy lunches, and that was the day of the buy one get one free Whopper. <laughs> and we'd send Walt Frabel. You know, all Walt, six foot four, 280, and Jeff Bay down to get the whoppers, you know, and there's seven coaches, so that's 14 whoppers. And they guys would come back and they'd, they'd have bought 16. I go, where's the other two? They ate them on the way back up. <laughs> and we'd be eating these whoppers. Our, our cholesterol had to be out of sight. Yeah. Out of sight. Um, e eating was always an adventure. Yeah, that was, that was. Yeah. <laughs> 
that was we would go to uh I, I learned this early on we would go to uh the palm cafe right dubik's palm oh, cafe yeah, for, uh, for lamb yeah, chicken lamb you get chicken. lamb chicken by the pound and you know, I'm, this is probably my first year, second year on staff, and, and Ron's like, hey, who wants to split with me? And, you know, nobody's nobody's biting, and I'm the new guy, so I'm like, yeah, I want to split with the head coach, you know? Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, when he starts chopping it up, his definition of a half and my definition of a half are significantly different. So I get, I get the scraps. I get the scraps, and he's eating like a king. So, you know, you take your lumps and – and learn your lesson. Uh, you know, get back to like the city series and 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 things. And you you can, uh, I'm sure in, in your your years at, at Cheney, it happened the same way. But you know, the the city the all city team would be coming out, and the 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 vindicator would say it was one or two two weeks after the season was over, and you know Sunday's edition will have the city series all city series team on it, you know, and it was a great spread out. You know, I had, my mom was a great historian. She, I got all that stuff up in Orlando, but I'm down in Marco right now. But, uh, but we would, you know, from, I think my, my ninth grade year, which, you know, I didn't play down at night. I was a ninth grader. I played on, nobody moved up at, at that time. And, uh, but ninth grade on, we would, we would go down because we wanted to see, who made the team, whether it was guys from Merceland or Cheney, who, who was on that team. It was so important. And, uh, you know, we go down and, you know, we get there and you'd be, we'd be like 20 minutes before the, the first edition's coming out. And, and so we'd run to Jay's hot dogs and eat about four to hot dogs at the Jay's and then muster on our face and get back down and, and, and get the paper. John Green made it. Yeah. No shit. We knew he was going to make it, you know, uh, Oh, what did John Jim Young from South? Oh, he was a good player, you know. And you just look and see, and I can't believe they didn't pick what's his name. He's second team. He should have been first. And it was just a, it was just a, uh, a rite of passage to go down and get that paper before Sunday morning, so that you knew if your buddies or your teammates or who in the city was picked and all that stuff. It was just, uh, it was just, it was. I feel sorry for the kids today because now there's so many conferences and they they put a they plastered in on on a Tuesday, the the all league and so forth where the vindicator would hold that whole that whole half of, of the, the sports section was dedicated to the all city team. I don't know yeah, if you guys you're right. Those that. days are gone. The, the, uh, Lauren Stolle, uh, I, I believe, used to take all the coaches. Uh, to lunch and and they'd pick the all city team, um, and then Chuck Perizic followed up and and, right. and and did the same. And when he left, then it turned to, you know, a hodgepodge. They we'd pick it down downtown uh, at the board office. Uh, the coaches would gather, but uh, um, yeah, that was a big deal. I remember going to Vindicator Square down there and waiting for that edition to come out. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah, there was some, you know, I remember Jamie Rivers, you know, Jamie Rivers, the linebacker at side, he was an unbelievable baseball player. Yeah. Him and Denny Kalani would, we, we play pony league at, at, uh, up on Glen, on Glen, Glen Allen or Glenview up, up by the park with the, it was a pony league field. Um, can't think of the name of Stambaugh Stadium, Stambaugh Field. Yeah, 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 off of Glen, yeah. 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 Down in the, yeah. Yeah. In the gully, yeah, yeah, and and I'm telling you, you know that 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 fence was that fence was probably it was at least two fifty two seventy five, and then there was big Christmas trees, big pine trees yeah. behind the fence. I seen I seen Kalani and I seen Jamie Rivers clear not only the fence but the the Christmas trees. I mean, they were like four yard shots. It was unbelievable. These guys, how, they, how good they were in baseball, you know. And Jamie goes to to up to Bowling Green and has a great career. Ends up playing with the St. Louis Cardinals. I actually was still down in in Mizzou and went down uh, to a game in in uh, St. Louis and uh, met him after the game and talked to him. What an athlete he was, and uh, you know. Joe Minotti, uh, another guy who was a successful dentist at uh, 
in um, Youngstown. You know, was a great player at Cardinal Mooney, and uh, but when, these guys uh, were when when Kalani you know, played for. Uh, I remember as a little kid when he was with Lafaro Concrete. Were you on that? You were on yeah. that team. Yeah. yeah, my brother was on that team. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bob Bob Hiller, Hilliard. Uh, Nick, yeah. Nick Vankovich, yeah. Uh, the Hodery brothers. Uh, uh, yes, Kalani, we got them all. Kalani was, uh, uh, Bob Centerman was the only one that can catch him. <laughs> right. He was the only one that can catch him. He, he, was, he, he, he was just throwing the ball past everybody. I mean, and Centerman it was the oh. only one that can catch him. Yeah. yeah. He threw like, uh, I mean, he threw not only a perfect game, he'd strike everybody out. Six yeah. innings. <laughs> You know, yeah. total strikeouts. Then he hey, he does the same. He goes to we go to Pony League and we're playing for thirteen thirty. And you know, I'm playing third base and and believe me, she needs a shortstop. So I go, Sheen. I'm standing like two feet from third base. I go, Sheen. I got everything inside me. You got everything outside me. The second base. You know. Oh yeah, thanks, man. You know. And then and then of course when Denny would pitch, Rock would go, Angle, move up. They're going to bug. Gonna... <laughs> Are you kidding me? If they catch one of his fastballs, they'll kill him. They'll break my jaw, right? So move up, move up. I would pray to God, oh, please, get two strikes. Please get two strikes. The guy would swing the bat. He'd touch my nose. You know, there'd be two strikes. I'd run back behind the bat because you, you would win the butt with two strikes. Man. But, yeah, Denny was, uh, he was, a, he was a great athlete. He, he actually signed with the Angels. Um, oh, did he? Wow. It didn't work out for him, but, but uh, and what a, what a tremendous, we were, for instance, kindergarten. Yeah. It, it was amazing, you know, and, uh, and he retired uh, from uh, uh, work in, in Kansas City, and he had done the lottery, done, he worked for Pepsi, or for Coke, he worked for, for Coors, the whole nine yards, and so, you know, his mother was up in age, and she was living by herself, and, and so he came home, and and I go, well, what are you going to do? He said, well, I'm going to take care of my mom. I, you know, I'll find some odds and ends. I go, hey, come on. Come coach my punters. I'm not how And I said, come coach my punters. I, we don't have anybody to coach punters. You, you're a hell of a punter. I said, I'll get you in the substitute. It's a substitute teacher. So, you know, long story short, he did that. He became a full-time sub. And uh, he coached our our punters and I said, "Well, where are you at it? You got to coach the nut jobs, the place kickers." You know. Now, because I really don't know anything about that, I gave him a book. I said, "Read it," you know. And he, he ended up coaching the, you know, the soccer <laughs> place kickers and so forth. And it it was beautiful because he would take those guys pre-practice and and coach them up. And you know, we didn't have to worry about it at all. You know. And then practice would start, and he'd go coach linebackers with, with uh, Eric Angaro. And he did, a, he did a tremendous job, and the kids loved him, and uh, he, he really got into it, you know. And they, it, was, it, was, it was pretty cool to see that, you know, being as, as friends as much as we were. He says, oh, I don't know anything about it. I said, well, you're going to learn real fast. So, uh, and again, West Side, man, right? You can't say no to a West Side. Right. So, but uh, – but you, so now you played for Joe. Let's see, you were, let Joe, was coaching Joe, when you. Joe's first year as uh, the DC at Cheney, um, yeah, was my senior year. Yeah. Yeah. Joe was a good player. Yeah, he was. He was a good coach, too. Joe. Yes, he was. Uh, I'd come out of the game and Joe would say, <laughs> say, hey, Ron, what can we do? I'd say just keep sending me and Cal Cagney and we'll be fine. <laughs> and there that's what he'd do. There you go. See? He was the smartest carry. Yeah. <laughs> but Joe was a, he was a good coach and he he was a good player. And he had a great career at Youngstown State. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. It, yeah. It, uh, it, I, I believe he uh, Ed was athlete of the year his senior year and then Joe was one year behind him and he, yeah. he, he was the same the following year. Yeah. 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 Eddie was a good player. Yeah. You know, Eddie's, uh, he was a good player and uh, you know, so my brother was a good linebacker at Ursuline and, and played really well. And he, 
he, he, I said, I said, how'd you learn to play so good? He says, I watch Lexi. <laughs> I watch Lexi. I see him stunting. Chain. <laughs> All right. That's good enough for me. You know, and, uh, so that was, that was cool that we got to play together in high school.